Welcome back to Distorted Opinions. I'm Kayla, and this week I'm joined by Ted, and we're going to be talking about a topic that was actually suggested by our friend Jack at Jacketto Picks. Jack has been sending a whole bunch of topic suggestions to me, which we appreciate. We appreciate the support, so thank you, Jack. We're going to talk about album art and does album art sell the album? Um, I, I've also written some notes about some albums that I feel have uh, pretty memorable covers, I think, that that to me, I hear this album title and I immediately picture the art. So uh, I know this was a topic, Ted, that you were pretty excited about when initially I told okay, you Jack had made this suggestion. There's plenty to unpack with it. I mean, there's lots sure. of different angles to to discuss when it comes to the various types of art and how it can sell an album versus you know, make an album more memorable, uh, in just the, uh, that's, what's the word promotion of the album mm -hmm. or, uh, something like that. So right. yeah, no, lot, lots of avenues to talk about. So let me ask you a question. Cause this is something that kind of came to mind when I was writing some notes for this show, given that the vast majority of people these days, consume their music through online platforms like Spotify. How much do you think album art really plays into that? Because I, I can't think of the Zero. last time I truly <laughs> paid attention to the album art when I listened to music, like a song online. I, it's been years since I've paid attention to that. Well, I know I there's think, album art, but well, I don't know. Every album it. has art, right? but it's, it's been slowly becoming less and less of a factor. Right. I mean, you go back to your records, your record covers were massive pieces of art you can look at. And then you got right. CDs. Well, obviously everything's a bit more compact. You've got, um, or if you want to even go, uh, cassettes, you know, even the cassette tapes mm -hmm. were only right. had a little bit of art on them. CDs right. were back to a little bit bigger, but still small. Uh, and then everything's digital and you can listen to right. it for free. And then right. it's not, you're not walking through and a CD store or a record store and judging an album by art anymore. You right. can just go right zero in of like, I want to hear 45 seconds of this song. Do I like it? Yep. Nope. All right. On to the next. Or I'm right. going to buy this. The art is just, uh, I don't know what luxury at this point. It's not, mm. I feel like the significance of album art is losing, um, of its value. As, as time right. has gone forward and everything's become digital, unfortunately. Right, right. No, I agree. It, it's kind of sad because that's, and I've said this before on other episodes, that for me, part of the experience of consuming music and part of the reason that I do often still buy a CD when I purchase a particular album is because I like being able to physically hold something and look at the art on it and you don't get that experience with digital music but I've also kind of over the last few years started to move into collecting vinyl and vinyl's a whole other really cool experience because you're getting that same art but on a much larger scale um and there's you know details sometimes I think to the art on the covers that maybe you don't notice on a smaller scale that's that's something you pay like for example um so i actually i grabbed a couple of albums but uh one of the albums i have is megadeth's peace sells but who's buying which i've seen the cover for this before on a cd however i've never really paid much attention to what's going on with this album cover until i really looked at the vinyl and it's basically a desolated United Nations with their mascot Vic holding a for sale sign. And at the bottom of the for sale sign, it says Vic Realtors, which I never paid any attention to because that would be really much smaller on a, a CD version of and the that's art the than only it is experience on the vinyl. I have with that album. I've only seen that on CD and I've right. never taken the time to zoom right in and put my face in it to look at it. Right. Yeah. It's uh for the people watching the video version, I'm holding oh, up that. the album, but you can see that he's got a for sale sign and it says Vic Realtors on the bottom of it there. But um, there's a lot kind of going on with this cover that I never really paid attention to. And it, I think it loses something on a smaller scale, but at least with a CD, you're still 
getting the experience of the art, which I think people listening on Spotify or another online platform are just kind of totally missing that experience. You're hearing the music, but I think the album art is a, a big part of it, too, especially in an era where, like you said, you're going into a record store and you're looking at the album design and that's kind of literally kind of judging a book by its cover so to speak you're, absolutely you're making a judgment on the album based on what the art looks like so i have two albums that stand out to me mm -hmm. uh, that i did exactly that and so yeah. used to go into newberry comics used to just kind of browse and obviously it's like they had like the the rock metal things were just already mixed in with everything else so mm -hmm. it's just kind of going through and like all right what does this one look like is it this i don't know what kind of style this is and every right. so often i would do i just gamble on it mm -hmm. so uh for one of the albums that i gambled on uh that paid off huge uh was american head charge uh the war of art mm -hmm. had a tank on it it was like this subdued uh uh you know, American flag on the ground. There was, I don't know, all sorts of chaos things going on. And right. the font of the war of art is like just hastily sketched with like a, I don't know, <laughs> a sharp object, almost like a knife. If you were just to write terribly. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, well, in this mix of everything else, I'm like, this seems pretty metal. And then I bought it. Holy mm -hmm. crap. It's a great album. And I listened to it for that being, ever uh it's still mm -hmm. high on my uh playlist when it comes to older tunes that right. album's 20 years old now and uh so but that was one fun, nice surprise another one uh that i completely gambled on um was a band called necro death mm -hmm. so a couple things to unpack with that <laughs> um <laughs> first it uh it had the death metal uh, kind of uh, font when it came mm. to Necro Death, yep. and uh, Matter of All Evil was the name of the album. And then there was like this face with like with long dark hair, almost almost like the Ring in a sense, uh, mm -hmm. with like a white robe and it just you know hands like this and um, rather menacing. And I'm like, well, this is definitely metal. Mm. I'll just take a shot at this. Right. I actually really enjoy that album and I listen to it a ton through high school. Not so mm -hmm. much these days, but it's still in my uh, playlist somewhere uh, if I sure. want to dig through it. But um, that was just a random find black metal search. But I knew that it would be in that genre based on what the album art was and a complete gamble at that. So judging mm -hmm. a book by its cover, 100 percent, you know, that that actually sold the album for me. And sure. um, these days. I don't look at album art at all because right. if I'm looking at songs, I'm more concerned with what it actually sounds like. Right. And I don't really care because right. I, I, I'm here for the music now, but now I right. can, I don't have to buy it to take it home to listen to it, right. to possibly be disappointed. Right. Or you already know in advance. So right. Right. It changes yeah. And, everything. and I know the MTV episode Keisha and I kind of talked about this a little bit and I was like, well, I know, I know what Ted's thoughts would be on this because we've kind of touched on it, but uh, we had discussed, you know, ha is YouTube the new MTV? And I was like, well, Ted absolutely consumes a lot of the music he listens to these days through YouTube. And he's said that on several shows now that you you find a lot of these new songs through YouTube. And so where you would have maybe normally gone into a record store and chosen to buy a CD based on the art. Now you're buying it based on YouTube has recommended this next video for you. And do, do I actually like the song? And I know a lot of those YouTube postings, people use the album cover as the image that they post for a song, which to be fair, though, if, that, it, if that's the screenshot, I still might be swayed. Okay. to click on it if it it's, okay. if it's in a lineup and you know you have all your youtube videos and if the art on the image uh, for that like boss thumbnail. video thumbnail mm -hmm. is worthwhile like mm -hmm. i might click on that before something else sure i may only listen to 30 seconds because i'm like yeah it's trash <laughs> i'm on to the next one right. but right. um you know certainly something else to consider um right. but it, it's still like suppose has an impact but 
um, I, I'm not buying anything uh, like I used to. No, no right. gambles. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Um, and I think you kind of have on the other side of it, too, at least back in the day, I think there was also some controversial album art that maybe resulted in more albums being sold. And one of the first covers that comes to mind for me is Nirvana's Nevermind. Oh, yeah. Came out in 1991, which I think everybody, regardless of whether you listen to Nirvana or not, you've seen that album cover and you've probably seen people spoof that album cover um but it is a naked baby which was uh four month old spencer eldon in a pool reaching for a dollar bill that's on a fishing hook or a fishing line and i uh, i was kind of reading up a little bit on it last night and i guess there were a lot of people that kind of saw that cover as nirvana's way of kind of showing uh bands trying to go for the big time and and the record labels kind of pulling that away and this is where matt would probably insert another rant about uh <laughs> PR reps. in our reps PR but reps, um yeah. but apparently it actually had more to do with kurt cobain had an obsession with water birth at the time which also explains the in utero album which i believe was their next album but I guess the record executives really pushed for the album cover to be changed on Nevermind. They did not want a cover with a naked baby on the front of it. And the compromise that, that Kurt Cobain apparently made was to put a sticker over the anatomy saying, if you're offended by this, you're a pedophile. Um, <laughs> which, I mean, in itself is Can we, like, feel, point. Can we just pause for a second and imagine if that was you today like it like yeah like that person that kid is like hmm 40 something years old he still recreates the album cover apparently oh, every no. few years as an adult <laughs> I, I feel like he probably doesn't i feel like he probably covers himself now but you got to get away with the world at this maybe. point whatever well yeah i don't know a little bit oh, i feel like a, for some reason a little different for a full-grown adult to be naked in a pool on an album cover and a four-month-old child oh, but but yeah, no, he actually apparently does recreate the album cover. And obviously it's, um, <laughs> you know, he's there's there's an attachment to that for him, you know, for his entire life now, because he was the face literally of that album cover. Uh, but yeah, no, no way. I, I can't imagine that you'd be able to get away with that in today's yeah. world. But even then they were kind of like. Yeah, don't know that this is a good idea. And I just think that it's really funny that the, the compromise was to put that on a sticker on the album cover. And I feel <laughs> like that probably led to more sales, maybe, than even if they had just left the cover as is um, the fact that there was that already that controversy around it. Um which, again, I'm not sure that you would see something not not only would you not see a cover like that today, but I'm not sure anybody would even really bother to try and, and do something like that on an album cover, because I think album art is just kind of a second thought at this point, And it's not something people see hmm. is in the way that they did back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, maybe even early 2000s, because at that point you didn't have as many. You had Napster, but people were still buying CDs. Yeah. And not to to try to change gears, I'm I'm kind of yeah. looking through a number of different uh, album covers. And boy, I, I could go on a rant on a number of these. Um, mm -hmm. But think of Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. I had that in my notes, too. Yeah. Right. Iconic. Mm hmm. I, I, it's very simple very it's just a prism light goes in rainbow out the other very mm -hmm. simple mm -hmm. uh mostly all black album right. uh otherwise those uh simple lines but it it was so i don't know it, compared to everything else that's can be flashy and right. busy and right everything else you know maybe for something that simple it, it definitely also stands out and right you know really is the i suppose symbol of the album uh that everyone con uh, you know has that connotation automatically uh right. with that particular album right exactly you hear dark side of the moon and that's 
one of the things that immediately comes to mind is that album cover which is also on shirts too i believe mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure i've seen That's many shirts everything. with that that album cover on it um another one that i had kind of along the same lines get ready for it folks if you've been following the show for a while you're probably not going to be surprised that i'm about to make this reference but metallica's black album <laughs> which uh, is like, literally here, here like is. <laughs> i mean there is there is actually art on there but it's very hard to see unless you look closely because it's a very very dark gray metallica logo in the corner and then they've got the snake pit snake uh, in one of the bottom, I think the bottom right corner of it, but it's mostly black. And I, that, that was a big deal too, even though there's hardly anything on the, the cover of that album, that was something. And I mentioned in a previous show, uh, the parody band episode that Spinal Tap in, uh, in one of the, in the Metallica, the making of the black album, uh, DVD that they released, they're talking to the guys from Spinal Tap at a, show that they were both at and those guys are giving them a hard time because they've released the black album which spinal tap notoriously none more black they released their black album which was literally just black and so the big thing that they're telling them is like well it's not really the black album because you have your logo in the snake there so it's not truly black but it's black there's none more black than our black album Oh, so what is this that? is a black album cover, but okay. under, but it has a sheen to it, so you can actually right. see the design in the but, light, but yeah. in in darkness, like well, it's just a, it's it's black, right? And you under, it's nice that I have good lighting, so you can actually right. see the reflection. Right. Uh, but this is a Durin Gray album, um, okay. That depending on the angle, the. The light that one you can kind of see, see yeah, a... but you can see there's, you know, people, villagers, whatever right. in that uh, design. But when you were mentioning an all black album, like, wait a minute, right. I've got this thing right here. There's that, a few of them out that, there. That's just basically black, but it has that right. sh- like sheen on it that you can mm-hmm. uh, barely make. It. And I'm also the, the lyrics. Oh, jeez. Yeah, everything. The, the entire. Oh, they took it a step further. Yeah, the entire booklet. You'd have to be in that certain angle to even oh, read the lyrics right. because it's all in that font. Wow. Um, so good luck because I can't even make out what the album name is because I totally <laughs> forgot. But um, either way, Duran Gray did that as well. Mm, yes. Made me, made me think so of it. a few few bands have definitely done it. And I can guarantee you, well, maybe not. Maybe somebody's brightened it up. But if you were to go look at that album cover, if you were to look for that art online, you probably would just see black because I'm sure a scan of it probably of doesn't the, really most show of the album that. Is scans and it, it, right. kind of, it make it takes the quality down. Mm. Um, like even if you buy an album on iTunes or whatever, and you get like the digital booklet, you right. know, I you hope that it's an actual digital copy as opposed to just right. a straight, you know. Uh, cheap a scan, scan. Yeah, yeah and yeah. the scan copies are awful like yeah. really loses a lot of quality with that and it's For at sure. that point not really worth it i'd rather buy the real right. thing right but yeah um yeah um another so one yeah i yeah go ahead that jumps out at me uh that was rather notable um is pantera's vulgar display of power mm. which is a dude getting punched in the face Mm-hmm. And his face is all, you know, distorted. Um, right. And the story behind that is they were recording the album. They needed to have a cover and they went out and asked, they, they want to paying this guy 20 bucks to be punched <laughs> in the face over and over until they got the shot. So he at least get, he, it Seriously? sounds like, yeah, I, I forget this, the actual number of times he was punched, but they did that, uh, I think, eight times till they got the shot for the cover oh, of the geez. album so 20 that, bucks like it was cheap like I, I swear to you yeah i swear it's uh we, people at home would need to uh google that but there's a story he, he got paid minimal money to get punched in the face he just wanted to be on the cover and poof 
but his face is That's absolutely crazy. right. His jaw's like way over here. Like it's a good hit. Yeah. But uh, wow. but yeah, that's another fun story for that album cover. That's notable. That, it really stands out. I had no idea that that was the story behind that cover. That's funny. Yeah. And it was <laughs> you can see his like really long hair. So it would have been the I, I feel like it was one of their crew of, of people. Mm. But um, mm, possibly. Yeah. So that was another yeah. one. Stands out. Um, I um, mean, another one for me that that came up was uh, Bruce Springsteen's "Born in the USA," which came out in 1984. Which uh, I think most people have probably seen it, and whether or not, like, if you're our age, you remember it. I because I didn't remember it until I saw it, and then I was like, "Oh right, uh, it's a backside shot of Bruce Springsteen wearing blue jeans, a white T-shirt, and he's got a red baseball cap." stuffed into his back pocket and he's standing in front of an american flag the picture was taken by annie Leibovitz, and apparently it was met with a lot of backlash from people because there were a lot of people that thought it looked like he was urinating on the flag oh. which, <laughs> which caused trouble in itself so uh like I, that was not the intent the intent was to tie in this red white and blue american boy wearing jeans and a t-shirt with a baseball cap and people took it a step further where, again, today, I'm not really sure that that would have been like he probably sold albums because of that. <laughs> but today right. probably wouldn't have had that kind of impact. So uh, I thought that was kind of interesting because I personally never looked at that album and was like, well, it looks like he's desecrating the flag. It doesn't that that's not. And then once that was pointed out and I'm looking at it again, I'm like, OK, I can see where maybe some people would have thought this but right no <laughs> um <laughs> like yeah. what um but you know uh that that was one album cover i kind of forgot about um another one that kind of stood out to me that i thought was really cool because i went and bought the vinyl um of this particular album is anthrax's spreading the disease which uh, features a young metalhead on a table being checked for radiation by guys in hazmat suits. And so I learned a few fun facts in, in looking up information about this particular album cover last night. Uh, there are some people that believe that the guy in the uh, on the table here represents or is a likeness of Frank Bello, who was the new bassist at the time, which I didn't realize Frank was Charlie's nephew. Apparently he is, um, which I thought was kind of interesting. So hmm. and I guess Charlie was kind of involved in coming up with the design for this. But this was done by the same artists who did the sleeve for Led Zeppelin's physical graffiti. Peter Corston and Dave Heffernan. Um, and probably even more interesting to me than the cover of this album was the sleeve for the record, which I don't own the CD, so I'm not sure if the CD has something similar, like, like in, in the, the pamphlet lyrics book or, whatnot. or something. Um, but the sleeve has this really cool drawing of it's it's a sketch of all the band members and different roadies and different people who are involved with the band and um, apparently charlie benante actually sketched this his signatures down in the bottom here but the first time i pulled this album out of the sleeve to listen to it and i saw this i was like well that's kind of cool because most of the vinyl i own you pull out the album and the sleeve is just a plain kind of off white colored sleeve and it might have the band name and the album title or something on it or it may just be plain but this one has this really cool sketch that was done by charlie and then on the back it's got all of the lyrics to all the songs on the album which i thought mm. was really interesting so you know this is another one of those things that listening to your music online you're not experiencing the cool art that comes along with it and that's one of the things i really like about vinyl as well is like i said you're getting a much bigger version of any of the art you would have gotten with a cd and you're obviously getting more than you'd get if you were buying a track online or listening to it online right. so well uh, and i've got two uh other things to mention while we're sure. going through uh first one is uh static x's oh, yeah. cannibal album yep and uh if 
you just buy this album online and it's just a digital copy under closer inspection these are switchblades and forks uh oh. like all the way around this skull on the logo um and then on the inside this, this is my signed copy but it's all jungle themed and um just kind of playing that uh you know whole cannibal theme all the way through but you know just kind of going through and like all the pictures of the bands and all the other aspects of things that go on uh, as part of the art or like underneath the cd with their mm -hmm. static x logo with just two more forks um i don't know it's album art's just so much better <laughs> when you can actually have it and hold it right. because you get a lot more out of it um right and then the other good part about um you know special edition cds that used to be available um that you know if you paid the extra bucks and not only you get the cd the, the art but you also got like big art like disturbs oh. Ten Thousand fists came with like this booklet um and it's an actual <laughs> it's an actual book of that came along with <laughs> I have like other things in here because the day <laughs> I got this album I met the band and got a picture with them right. but um, all the different other pieces of art and things that come along with things are falling out like crazy <laughs> but like this one in particular right oh that's cool like it's just like this it's almost like a wax paper design mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it's see through it's I don't know it's really really cool stuff but you can yeah. actually get a book for the most part with some of the albums and that's it's cool. not it, it's i don't know it's a different experience there's so much more look there's the concert ticket from strawberries <laughs> just to put a date on that strawberries wow yep. this was their limo driver's business card <laughs> nice so some time talking to him nice um, but yeah and uh my look a bazooka paid parking pass. There you go. Well, literally everything in this book. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but, you know, special edition things aren't really mm. that popular. You have to go to, like, the band's website and then right. maybe buy something custom. But then it's it, you're not just getting the album. It, it's not this whole to do because, again, this is a CD book. CD is right. in the book. You know, right. it's, you get the album at the same time. It's a different experience. You don't quite right. have all of this these days when you're just right. buying a digital download of something. Right. And then you just look at the picture, which you pray is not a scan. Ah, it's a right. little different. It's all right. Not well, like it was in my day. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, man, yelling at the clouds. Well, well and, and let's talk for a second about I, I've recently changed my location of where we're recording these shows. But when I'm usually in my other location, one of the things that I've had behind me for the last few months is. I purchased Seven Dest's latest album, the mm. the vinyl version off of their website, which mm -hmm. came with it was a signed album cover, which when I bought it, I expected that meant like, OK, you're going to get the vinyl and they're going to take, you know, the actual sleeve, the the outside of the, the cover. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. The packaging. And they're going to sign that. But what I thought was really cool was that when it arrived, you got the album fully sealed and they basically just took an album sized printout of the cover art and that signed by the band, which meant that that could be framed and enjoyed and not like, oh, well, if I frame it now, I can't take that album out or I need to put that album in some other sleeve because I'm not going to be able to keep taking it in and out of the frame. So. Uh, I thought that was really cool. Um, you know, that's that's one of those things, too, that I, I have many a CD case around my house that has the little booklet that's been signed by bands that I've met. And, Ted, you've got a bunch on your uh, wall everything, there. I mean, these two, I mean, obviously, the Static X one was, you can... I mean, the other band members are on the inside. Inside, yeah. Um, the CDs cover a sign that's Hell Yeah, Kill Switch Engage, mm -hmm. uh, Lamb of God, and Corn. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There's uh, a Corn album there. Um, yep. Amongst 
others because I've got more. Um, and right. obviously this, this disturbed one with the group, like, like mm -hmm. the whole right. Oh, the lighting's terrible sometimes. on the inside. Yeah, but at least you know you're still able to have the artwork, or you know, right. some of them signed wherever their faces were, like in uh, sometimes or sometimes they sign on the inside. But right, at least. Um, Side tangent. Always appreciate that they sign their own faces, so you know which signature is which. Because film right. signatures are just like doctors, just like mix. oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> barely barely legible. But uh, right, you know, it definitely it's it's a neat thing to have. And when you right. have the CD, now it's like you got the artist and their work together. How are you going to have right. them sign a digital copy? You're going to have to buy the right. where do you? Mm, ticket a t-shirt or something yeah, do you get them to sign the back of a ticket but who's printing tickets everything's digital what do you right yeah maybe it's a t-shirt right right like i would absolutely today if i was gonna go meet a, a band i would still go buy the cd if for no other reason than to have the cd art for that band to be able to sign right because like yeah you could have them sign a t-shirt or something but quite honestly like that gets to be to a point where and like i th I think you and i probably both are in a similar situation uh, maybe I i'm the type of person anytime i've gone to a concert i buy a shirt yeah. if i really like a band i probably own several of their shirts I shirts take up a lot of space six lamb of god t-shirts yes so, two from shows and then i was just buying them because i like the right. band right so i think you could probably relate to me on this that shirts take up space mm -hmm. in your closet and those are not like at this point in my life band shirts are not necessarily something that i wear every day because you know we're nope. we're now adults and we have to be somewhat professional in our uh in our work well, lives. i like being the old dude i was like i got this shirt 20 years ago right. and i'm still right. going to their shows like right exactly <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um so i mean you know for me again you could have them sign a shirt but i think a cd is something smaller a cd is something that it's easier if you wanted to frame it or hang it on display somewhere than it is to do with a shirt or a lot of other things um I mean, there's guitars that gets expensive. Like I that's had, huge. Uh, that's like a, such a big thing. I mean, I know I, you have a signed guitar, but at least you can play right. it. <laughs> well, well. Also, there was a there was some thought that went into who I had sign it because. Uh, so I've got a Randy Rhodes V, and um, I remember my dad taking me to meet Stained back in the day at Newbury Comics out in Framingham, and. I brought that guitar with me. I brought the CD with me, which, by the way, the CD, I had won a promotional copy through WAF at the time. And it actually says on the bottom of it, this is a promotional copy, like not for resale or something like that. I don't remember the Sweet. exact wording. Um, I brought that and they put a stipulation that you could only have one thing signed. So mm -hmm. I got to the table and I was still kind of undecided. And the guys in the band actually looked at the guitar and were like, we probably shouldn't sign the guitar. Why don't we sign your, your album cover? And I was like, okay. So they signed the album. And then I went and met Zach wild a few years later. And for that, I was kind of like, okay, Zach wild, Ozzy's guitarist, I think known maybe guitar player, known guitar player, been with Ozzy for a long time, has a history, but also Randy Rhodes played for Ozzy. I feel like there's kind of yeah, like there's a tie meaning. in here that that makes it a little bit makes a bit more sense to have Zach sign the guitar. Um so my my V is actually signed by Zach Wilde. And actually, I'd have to look at the date on it because he actually wrote the date, too. And I want to say we're somewhere around 20 years since since he signed Easy. that guitar. Yeah. Easy. Um, Cuz I think when you, but, when we started hanging out uh more regularly, it was already signed and that was what right. 2001. Right. Ish. So it had to have been right, right. in maybe Yeah, I think it was probably 2001 ish. somewhere in 2001 that. 2002. Yeah. But 
really one of the things there is like now you've got a very large high value item that's been signed by somebody so that could go either way depending on who you choose to have sign it like i think there's some people that think you have a guitar sign and now it goes way up in value if you take it to some festival or something but that's not always the case if it's nope. if it's signed by a whole bunch of bands you don't know who's who you don't know who the bands are the bands are maybe not that well known so to your geez. point even uh the uh shout out to musical round music mm. uh they yes. posted on instagram does anyone recognize this autograph right and yes. like they don't so if you they don't, don't have a history or any right. sort of relevance to and if an artist signs a guitar and if it's not a known signature like right good luck it's not gonna be worth a heck of a lot if you don't know who it is right <laughs> or at least you have to kind of like tie the story together or it has right. to be notable or whatever right like that sign some things don't always right. make money I guess the moral of the story there is that my recommendation would be that if you're going to meet a band, buy the CD, whether you still listen to CDs or not. Like for me, it's just artwork. I don't listen yeah. to CDs directly, but it's you can signed and it's yeah. Or you can get like there are a lot of times like I know Metallica does this. If you purchase one of their CDs, you now get the digital download as well. So you don't have to rip it because they've already made the digital download available for you in the price of buying the CD. But also, and it's a, this is a little bit of a slightly off topic side tangent, but the price of buying a song on CD has gone down or buying a CD has gone down significantly from oh, people when away. I used to buy. Like you used to pay 20, 25, 30 bucks for a CD. Oof. Oh, maybe this the big disturbed booklet was like 28 bucks back in the day this is 2005 okay, so double yeah. disc cd would have been maybe like 25 30 bucks depends yeah you might have paid 15 to 20 for a single and i was still CD. trying to dial it in on like a dollar a song like if i what am i going to get out of this if there's 17 mm -hmm. tracks okay mm mm -hmm. Fourteen dollars, good deal. Right. If I'm paying seventeen, eh, okay. Right. Dollar a song. That that was always in my head uh, when I was buying CDs back in the day. Meanwhile, the price of vinyl. If you want original <laughs> vinyl these days, and there may be some people that might shred me a new one for this because they maybe don't agree with the pricing, but this Anthrax album was thirty-five, and the Megadeth album was forty, and I've paid. $125 for a couple of Metallica original albums on vinyl down at the vinyl vault. But I'm willing to do that because I want the original vinyl. I don't want the represses. And so original vinyl, some of the harder to find stuff, you're going to pay a lot more money than you might have paid when you originally purchased one of these albums. Like some of them you can still find. They have the old sticker on them from when they were originally purchased and people paid like four bucks, eight bucks, something like that for an album. <laughs> now you're paying way more than that because of the cost of inflation. But um, it's funny because vinyls kind of in some cases gone the other direction where now it's more expensive to buy vinyl and the cost of CDs seems like it has dropped significantly. Uh, and then obviously online, you either can listen for free with the exception of you have to listen to ads or you can purchase a song off of Amazon or something for, like you said, 99 cents a track or somewhere in that ballpark. So mm -hmm. and you can buy it by the track as opposed to having to buy a whole album in order to get all like one or two songs that you might have wanted to listen to off of that album. So, yeah, I think uh, so don't recommend i mean yeah i mean if you're going to meet a band then buy it just so you have it but it's i would hate to the cds are dead <laughs> people are giving cds away it's yeah. the era is over um right happy i tried selling what i could at the time that i did uh mm. before newberry comics started closing stores <laughs> right i got their money back and uh so see you later no um <laughs> so they you know i still got a bunch that just need <laughs> what we're gonna do with them um mm. but if they're signed you know it's it means a bit more it takes right. you back to that experience of when you met the band and all of that it, it just um 
I don't know. It's nice having that again in your hand, physical. Um, it, it's just different now. That's right. all it is. Yeah, but for sure. So for all you young people out there that might be listening to this, you're probably the entire time going, "What is a CD? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what is better yet? What is vinyl? Uh, what although is, maybe not because no, vinyl is making cool a comeback. Again. And yeah. yeah. Uh, but what is a CD or what is a cassette? Yeah, um, all of our musical references. We didn't get touch eight track. <laughs> true. true. Yeah, I feel like eight track is definitely a dead format. Though. Yeah, it'll never Whereas come back. Whereas Metallica is releasing the was it the thirtieth anniversary uh, release of the Black album, and they're actually selling. You can buy it on cassette. They're actually selling cassettes there, of the Black a lot of album. Bands that are reviving uh, cassette. Uh, right the copies uh, right there's a lot of metal bands that are that that there's a demand for that somehow mm-hmm. and they're making limited runs 300 or but then now you're you're getting like the diehard fans of like i've got right. number whatever of 300 right. cassettes and right and at that rate you're maybe never listening to it like right. it's just a collector's item like i just I bought know. Like a couple of years ago, I bought two Metallica cassettes from Greg down at the vinyl vault only because I was like, well, these are kind of cool. They were, I guess, what you would call singles of uh, of a couple of their their songs. I think there were a couple of live recordings on them as well, but I'd never seen them before. And I was like, well, these are kind of cool. And he was only charging. I think they were like two or three bucks a cassette. So I was like. I'll get these. I can listen to them. I do have a cassette player that's mm-hmm. part of I got one of those all in one uh, record player, CD player, radio, cassette tape deals. I'd like to get a better record player at some point, but it works fine for now for me to be able to listen to my my vinyl. But um, I can listen to the cassettes. I just I don't think I've put them in to listen to them since I bought them. I really just bought them because I again I like the art on them. That was part of it. And also I'd never seen them before. And I was like, well, I don't really collect cassettes, but they're Metallica and I'm a huge Metallica fan. I'll buy these. They're only a couple of bucks. Uh but I didn't realize that cassette tapes in general were also making a bit of a comeback with it's, it's not nearly as big as as vinyl vinyl, I think vinyl is, is where it's at I, I mm. i'd be shocked if cassette comes mm. back to the way i mean right. I, I can't see it being coming back to the to the height of right. where vinyl is there's no way right. the format right. is too atrocious uh <laughs> It, it, their better things came out after that. Like that was that was a necessary blip in music consumption. Mm. Formats change for the better, and mm. uh, see you later. Well, more <laughs> people probably have ways to listen to vinyl these days than cassettes too. Like I don't know that it's real easy to get a cassette unless you buy like an old used one. I'm not sure they're really being made short of old used or built into something like what I've got, where it's a modern record player and it's got all of the above um i just don't know that there's really a a, an easy way like cars don't come with cassette players in them anymore cars don't come with cd players anymore mine did surprisingly and mine's not that old but maybe now now that we're into the the 2020 era maybe they're not making them yeah everything's bluetooth at this point yeah every rental car i've ever had in the past five years didn't have a cd player Hmm. okay unless it was like a jeep why Jeep. Anyway, that's a different tangent altogether. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So I think we've probably kind of uh, kind of covered most of the the conversation on uh, album art at this point. Unless there's anything else you want to add, um, now might be a good time to song roll into the, the song of the week here. Um, if you want, I'll go first and I'll go do our it. usual spiel about uh, song of the week. So if you're new to the show, we have a Spotify song of the week playlist. We put all of the songs in their entirety into that playlist. We put the link into the description of every episode. And if you're watching the video version, we've also got the Spotify scan code that we'll put on the screen. You can open up the Spotify app on your phone or mobile device click on the or tap on the camera on the search bar and hold it up to the screen and it will scan the code and take you to our playlist. 
playlist is uh, very eclectic. I think we're at now over 10 hours worth of music on there from all of the shows. And uh, we will add today's picks to the playlist as well. So you'll be able to find those with that. Uh, I picked a song off of one of the albums that I talked about during today's episode, and that is Wake Up Dead by Megadeth off of 1986's Peace Sells But Who's Buying. Um, if you haven't heard the song, 20 seconds into the song, there's a melt your face guitar solo. You know it's going to be a good song if you're 20 seconds into it and there's already a ripping guitar solo. Uh, the video for this, which I hadn't seen in a long time until last night, is kind of Blues Brothers-esque. They've got the band on a stage and they've got this chain link fence cage around them and there's a whole bunch of, it's almost like it's a, a small scale concert and they've got these fans that are scaling the fence. It, it actually kind of almost looks like a prison yard to be honest, but um, rowdy fans climbing the fence, of course they eventually tear it down and they end up on stage and they're jumping off the stage crowd surfing and it's, it's basically like a live, like a concert music video, essentially. Uh, but the song itself, I don't know why I thought this, but I always thought it had to do with drug use. And maybe that's just because Dave Mustaine was known for heavy drug use and drinking at that time. Uh, but apparently it's actually about Mustaine cheating on his girlfriend at the time and trying to keep it a secret because he was homeless at the time and didn't want her to find out because he needed a place to stay and he was afraid she would actually kill him if she found out that he was cheating on her. So keep that in mind the next time you listen to that song, because that's not at all what I thought that was about, to be honest. Maybe I just didn't pay close enough attention to the lyrics, which we've talked about on previous shows. The lyrics are not the first thing that I pay attention to in most cases. It's the guitar. And so for years, I've mostly just been paying attention to the guitar there, and I've kind of picked up on the lyrics here and there, but never would have guessed that this song was about Dave Mustaine being worried that his girlfriend was going to kill him because <laughs> she, because he was cheating on her. Yikes. So, uh, yeah, Wake Up Dead by Megadeth. That is my pick of the week. And uh, with that, I'm going to pass it over to you, Ted. Yeah. And what have you got? Uh, another uh, song based on a band that we already talked about and that okay. I talked about, actually. Okay. Uh, when it was we were talking about how album art sells uh the cd i already talked about american head charge and so i picked this song off of that album that i was sold via the artwork uh, okay and the again the album is called the war of art came out in 2001 uh, napalm records the band's from minneapolis minnesota um and this particular song called song for the suspect starts off with a little piano kind of lulls you in and then riff guitar uh, and good screaming got some good uh, harmony in there uh, and vocally but it's still a metal tune mm -hmm. uh, sure. but that song is probably one of my favorites amongst the few really good songs on that album uh, and like I said this after I found my <laughs> after I found this album uh, it just it's constantly on a playlist somewhere songs from it uh, I find myself just revisiting it, it it's a, a very well done uh, album in general but this song mm. had to stand out for song of the week this week so awesome that is my pick I haven't heard anything from those guys in I don't know how long it's they been a while forms and they took like two years off. Uh, mm -hmm. They were together. Uh, I think one of their guitar players had passed away and uh, they took uh, between 2009 and 2011 off. And then they came back together. I believe okay. they're still together and making okay. music. Um, but this was really the only album from them that I've really sunk my teeth mm -hmm. into and mm -hmm. obviously really enjoy. So right. um, I did see that they had a slight hiatus for a short period of time, but apparently still, still around and kicking. So, okay. I fully expect to take a trip down memory lane when I edit this episode, as yeah, I usually I think do with some of one. your throwbacks. Like yeah, yeah. you had Mudvayne last year at one point and I was like, Oh man, 
I forgot how good Mudvayne was, right? I haven't heard that one in a long time. I was like, this is good. I added it to one of my playlists because I was like, all right, this is one I got to revisit more often. So right. New I metal's coming forward. back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, 20 years. I look forward to hearing coming this back one. around. That's right. It's on a cycle, folks. Yeah. It's on a cycle. Uh, so on that note... Uh, just the usual uh, announcements that we do at the end of the show here. If you are interested in being on a show or if you've got a topic to suggest for us or maybe you know somebody who would like to be on a show, reach out to us. There's a few ways you can do that. You can leave us a voice message on our anchor page at anchor.fm slash distorted opinions. We've also got links to our social media platforms there. You can find some of the places the show is available in audio only format or you can just search distorted opinions on your favorite podcast platform. You'll likely find us Uh, we've also got a youtube channel which we would love it if you would go subscribe so that we can get to at least 100 subscribers and be able to get a nice youtube slash distorted opinions url or something other than the big long url that they've given us so head over give us a subscribe there and you can also reach out to us via email at distorted show at gmail.com leave us a comment on any of our social media platforms We'll respond to you pretty much anyway. Uh, Jack tends to send me a lot of messages on Instagram, and that's how I uh, I end up passing along topic suggestions to these guys. So again, if you've got ideas for show topics, feel free to send them our way because we're always looking for things to talk about. And some of I think the most interesting topics we've talked about recently have come from fan suggestions. So uh, let us know. On that note. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next week with a whole new episode. See you later. See you next week.